Hello and welcome to yet another edition of Bits to Billions. It's 7 a.m. on a Friday morning in Bengaluru. We're in a setting that's very unlikely for a startup, unusual, lots and lots of trucks as you can see and we have a startup right here that's trying to simplify trucking for India. Rajesh Yabaji, the co-founder and CEO of Black Puck, which became a unicorn recently. Thank you very much for joining us on Bits to Billions. So as I said, what Black Puck tries to do is it tries to match demand and supply when it comes to uh, truckers and shippers across India. Um, Rajesh, you know, did you spend the first few years of Black Buck just in locations like this, hitting up truck operators, fleet operators, asking them if they want to come on your platform? What was it like in the beginning? Yeah. First of all, thanks Chandra for having us over uh, the show. So I think, uh, you know, well, while I was just driving into this truck terminal today morning, so Bangalore is where we started back in like, the groundwork started in 2014, the company was founded in 2015. Uh, so this was the first truck terminal, which was our Adda. So almost all the lanes I would have definitely had chai over here. All the lanes that are some of the other meals. Because uh, coming here, like you throw stone, you'll either have a transporter, a truck operator, a shipper, you'll get everybody over here. So yeah, so I think uh, even today, I think, you know, because we're present right now almost in all the districts acro across the country. So, um, you know, even today, these zones are our like farming zones. So we get into this and we, you know, go truck by truck, sign up people you know, help them understand our services, onboard them and help them like have a good life using Black Buck. Yeah. Right. So how many truckers now technically on the Black Buck platform and how many clients do these, you know, truckers yeah. service? So roughly we have about, uh, you know, about over 1 million truck operators who transact with us on a monthly basis. And uh, like we have about roughly 45,000 shippers all across the country, big companies, small companies, which request for a load on the platform and, and get their, uh, you know, trucking requirement fulfilled. Yeah. Right. So when you talk about these companies, 45,000 companies, so these would be what FMCG companies or yeah. automakers, so, which, which sectors? Yeah. So basically, uh, we like we do, we do two, like within shippers, there are two kinds of shippers. I think the names you took are the enterprise shippers mm. and then the small and medium scale enterprises. Right? Mm. Under enterprise shippers, there are FMCG companies, there are chemical companies, there are infrastructure companies. So every sector, which is hmm. basically transportation dependent, uses our services. On the SME side, that's interesting because enterprise shippers probably would be about 200 and 230, roughly that would be the number range. Rest all, the 45,000 are literally the, you know, SMEs of the country, the, you know, traders, you know, the wheat traders, the rice millers, hmm. uh, a mandi agricultural trader, a transporter, you know, out there who wants a truck to sort of ship excess goods, whatever he has. So those are the entire 45,000. So it's a mix of anyone who wants to find a truck comes to the Black Buck platform, posts his requirement and gets a truck and gets a service fulfilled. So in a sense, is this like the Uber or Ola of trucks? I mean, would, would that be a fair way of understanding Black Yeah, so, so I think that's how it started that it was merely like a matching platform where a trucker could get a load hmm. a, you know and, and a shipper could get a truck right hmm. but as we kept solving right what was what is really important uh, you know for the trucking ecosystem i mean one thing which is the base of the trucking ecosystem is that 80 90 percent of these guys own like between one and five trucks right hmm. and the entire industry is about more unlocking these guys right so what we realized by year three, year four of building this journey, so we started in 15, now we're in 22. So by 2018, what we realized is that if it is just about aggregation, it is not going to work. Hmm. Right? What was really needed was more rolling up the sleeves, 
getting down to the life of these truck owners and unlocking that. By that, what I mean is not only that they need loads which will help them earn more, you know, in their lives, their entire payments, paying to the, you know, driver, receiving money, paying for fueling, paying for tolling, all that had to be like, you know, opened up and organized. Second thing was that they had very little control on truck operations, where the truck is, where is it loading, where is the driver driving right now. So that took us to the entire area of telematics, right? Mm. And fourth was more in the area of like, you know, a, there's a trucker, aspiring trucker has two trucks, wants to buy a third one. There is an owner driver wants to buy another truck, finan credit. financial services to buy a truck, right? Mm. So basically what started off as a, just an aggregation platform, right? And, uh, you know, and also the revenue from, from just aggregation for us is like, you know, less than 20%, right? Mm. And 80% of the revenue of the company comes from enabling truckers do business, right? Mm. So we had to mutate from just, I think when you and I last spoke, we were just an aggregation platform. Yeah, yeah. From there, we had to mutate into a platform which is essentially like driving and championing the need for truckers to get organized, get more efficient, earn more money. To do that, we do loads, we do payments, we do telematics, we do financial services. Mm. So that's the new avatar of Blackbuck. And uh, and that's and that's and that's what that that avatar had actually you know come in by the time the last round also had happened and we continue to execute on on that story and help the truckers of this country like get more efficient. Right. Talk, talking about avatars, I remember the last time you met, you were still you know a few years uh, someone who had graduated from IIT Kharagpur a few years ago with short hair and all, and now literally you have become like from Yabaji to Babaji with this new <laughs> hairstyle. So is this what entrepreneurship does to you in? Five, six years, I must ask you. <laughs> yeah, so I think uh, uh, the short hair, short hair was, uh, was largely the, the peppy style of wanting to become an Air Force pilot. Okay. All throughout my life, right? Because and you also have an armed forces yes, background. background and yeah. my father was a soldier. So, you know, uh, I used to see these, uh, you know, uh, officers in the army who were like very young. And my father was this middle-aged guy giving so much of respect to this, you know, young 21-year officer, right? So I wanted to be that, right? And uh, lifelong because of an army family and wanted to be that, hair was always short. So except the last two years when I did not cut my hair, <laughs> it was always short. And this is like, you know, just, you know, one more attempt <laughs> to see, you know, what's out there. So exploration is like the key to you know, entrepreneurs and, uh, you know, building something. So. Mm -hmm. You also have an athletic background. I read somewhere that you're a pole vaulter. Do you still do pole vault? So, so I think huh. it looks like you've done a lot of study <laughs> <laughs> and your questions are like... <laughs> so, yeah, so I think um, sprints, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, long jumps, long distance running and pole vault. So, the, so there were a lot of chops in athletics that I used to do. Pole vault, last I did probably was... Uh, 13, 14 years back. Oh, okay. And uh, yeah, we, we thought we could KGP, make you do one on the Yeah, yeah, over show. the truck. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, I think, uh, yeah, so pole vault career got over then, but I then continued my long distance running career. And yeah, so I still do marathons. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in a sense, Rajesh, you know, trucking is indexed directly to the economy, you know, um, in, in terms of the movement of trucks um, or the loads that you see. So, based on the current economic scenario, I mean, India is probably the only country, a recent study said, which has zero probability of slipping into a recession. Yeah. Yeah. But we are seeing weakness in consumption. Uh, I think Unilever already spoke about, yes. you know, how they are seeing that trend. Yes. Uh, E-commerce platforms are talking about discretionary yes. spend coming down. Yes. So, you know, um, what what is the sense that you're getting considering, yeah. you know, trucking is a yeah. very good proxy for what's happening in the economy? So basically, um, uh, I think we probably get a much more advanced uh, information of what's really going to happen like in the economy, right? Uh, yeah, so it is like a lead indicator. It's a leading, lead, yeah. leading indicator, right? Because uh, any FMCG sales is happening probably on the end consumer, the, whatever the reporting is happening. But if factory is making goods, we get to know, right? So, so broadly, uh, first metric, right? Hmm. Are trucks traveling enough, right? Hmm. In terms of distances, right? Uh, when we ended, so the full data of June and the full data of March, trucks are riding the maximum ever in the last three years. Hmm. That's point number one, right? Hmm. So that gives us very good optimism into what essentially is happening in the core economy. Hmm. Second, 
our data is uh, very secular because we don't have one like let's say you know roughly the number of trucks which are on our platform are like 40% of india already hmm. and we're not secular to either like, one sector so all so a truck wherever it's traveling it's on our platform right so so from that point large part of india's material movement is in the core movement agriculture minerals right metals right so most of those sectors are doing fantastically well hmm. right and and third thing is that i think uh, you know uh, you know not my view it's more a you know red view i think what people are talking about is more a shift from a consumer spending cycle so hence maybe the points which you said may be true right to a more a capex spending cycle where impetus on infrastructure capex is going to be very high right fourth very important indicator is that how like one is if, our, if existing trucks in the economy are fully utilized typically it should drive a demand for new trucks yeah year on year right trucks are being sold 3 to 5 times more hmm. so we have a 300 to 500% growth in the sale of new trucks in every segment of trucks scv ilcv lcv mnhcv which is mnhcv is big trucks scv is a small chota you know tata as etc hmm. hmm. all these trucks depending on categories have grown the sales has grown by like 3 times to 5 times year on year right so that's a good good so sign so it's a very good indicator <clears throat> from a <throat> perspective of what the core of the economy is so i'm personally i'm very optimistic probably in for the next like 3 5 years of our economy and specifically for the trucking sector got it why the name black buck um uh, i think uh, this name was given by my one of my co-founders chanakya right and uh, obviously we were brainstorming we had all types of like very mm. you know weird names you know gadi book.com <laughs> like getagadi.com abhigadi.com all of that we, we tried but it was looking pretty you know bad we were mapping one company uh, the name of the company was uh, was coyote in the us right mm. they were not uh, like you know they are they're, they're not like us the avatar but they were doing very cool stuff back then it was on 14 like days right so coyote is again a name of an animal hmm. right and hence like black buck is also name of the animal and black buck is one of the fastest in animals native indian animal and that's what black buck yeah. okay <laughs> <laughs> nothing to do with salman khan <laughs> <laughs>
ट्रकिंग इज समथिंग दैट इज नेसेसरी इट हैज टू हैपन राइट विदाउट दैट वर्चुअली द लाइफ लाइन ऑफ इट इज द लाइफ लाइन ऑफ द कंट्री राइट एंड विदाउट दैट नथिंग विल सॉर्ट ऑफ मूव इन द कंट्री राइट एंड दैट्स वेयर वी सी ट्रकिंग हैज रिकवर्ड फॉर ब्लैक बक आई थिंक इट वॉज ऑल्सो अ ब्लेसिंग इन डिस गाइज बिकॉज ट्रकर्स हैव रियलाइज द इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी इज वेल राइट ड्यूरिंग दिस एंटायर कोविड फेज राइट दे अंडरस्टैंड द इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ बींग एबल टू use uh, technology to see whether trucks are to use technology to make payments online right since everything has become uh, more and more digitized over the last 2 years as well so i think for us it has also been a blessing in disguise we have been able to uh, digitize the trucking ecosystem to a large extent right and i think the journey goes on right so yeah i think uh, you know uh, as chanakya said except for the initial few days uh, we were able to bounce back there are lots of good things uh, that we didn't expect uh, you know to happen in a short time that covid kind of altered and then allowed us to move forward customers for example uh, indian customers shippers moving to digital mode it was taking a lot more time than what we were expecting even the intermediaries getting into technology as chanakya was highlighting uh, using digital uh, options to transact do their day to day business that you know kind of accelerated uh, because of uh, covid so i think uh, in our case we have gained quite a lot uh, we also learned few things as how to work from home uh, and how to now bring them back mm-hmm. and then you know do do this as a hybrid quite a bit of learning but overall touchwood uh, for black bucket has been uh, right. an important right. journey what in your mind is the lo- was the lowest point for you in the last 6 years when you thought we are not going to make it and you managed to bounce back i think once probably where uh, we really thought that it was we had hit the bottom when was this it was in 2016 hmm. but never uh, you know uh, and that's that's the beauty of actually being together with uh, you know three four people you derive strength from each other and then there is a larger core team and so on so i would say first of all never it has been a case that we we had to literally go down and feel that we are done right it was not the case but in 2016 after having raised uh, two rounds of you know equity uh, we hit a bottom because of excessive focus on growth and really not aligning the processes uh, that was an awakening call for us and from that point onwards uh, all of us committed to uh, the cause and also to the team entire organization that we would never allow ourselves you know to get into that kind of a situation, situation ever again right so rajesh you know we were also talking about how black buck kind of bounced back post covid but when do you see this bounce back translating to revenue and loss numbers because yeah. you're still posting significant losses i think the fy20 numbers that i saw you know there was some 240 crore of loss yeah. Yeah. and uh, that's really high considering you know you are a b2b uh, player and you know it should be far lesser yeah. so what what are you doing to bring yeah. down your losses yeah exactly i think uh, you use the right uh, words i think um, uh, there is like users who come to the platform and there is engagement and then typically is a revenue phase right so where we are today is uh, like roughly one in like three truckers in the country is like our monthly transacting customer he does something or the other on the platform taking a load or doing a payment transaction taking a loan right or use, using a gps device on the platform right so where we've been able to demonstrate a lot of growth is on people engaging with us right number one number two is that um is that if you look at it this particular engagement quotient is built by like let's say a combination of you know uh, salesforce right which is let's say on the ground tele digital so that's where the entire investment is happening right and as we speak today we've been try to like so truck owners are everywhere there are probably about 6 7 lakh village candidate villages where there are truck operators we probably have about our access between about 110000 villages roughly so that's where we are investing money into like building you know the entire uh, acquisition pipeline channel for truckers right now if you look at you know the areas from which we monetize right so the the verticals of payment verticals of telematics verticals of loans right largely start with like the first step is also monetization right 
Loads is a vertical which is heavily unmonetized for us. That's point number one. And we would like probably look at you know a, a 12 months to 24 months kind of an outlook to start monetizing that, right? So that's where engagement will start translating into revenues, right? Number two is that multiple different areas which are potential revenue sources for us, right? which is financial services, right? Which today is just a vertical which we launched this year, right? That monetization plan is like over the next five years, it will become a significant revenue source for us. Today it's close to zero percent. So I think you know. Um, Distribution is where you're investing, you know, a lot of money, and that comes first, right? Which is happening. That typically translates into users transacting on our platform, retaining, and using. When when they start, they start using one service, and then over a period of time, they use the second and the third service, and then the 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 services like marketplace and financial services are on the horizon of the next 12 to 12 months to like 36 months from monetization perspective. Got it. And um, you know, a few months ago, you also said that Blackbuck wants to get into consumables um, in yeah. the e-commerce space. I mean, you would supply, for example, grease or paint or tires or other things for your yeah. constituents. Yeah. Um, is that again something that you've already launched? Yeah. You're in the process of launching. Yeah. So it's basically, I mean, uh, as a company, like we keep doing multiple pilots, right? And uh, some pilots succeed, some don't, right? So, uh, so has this the, one succeeded or no? No, no. So under mm -hmm. under the consumer the consumables umbrella, under the financial services umbrella, we've been trying out multiple pilots, right? So um, so largely, I think uh, some of some of these verticals succeeding is also dependent on other other verticals succeeding. Assuming that you know you want to sell tires, right? And selling tires uh, typically is a sort of a credit product, right? So you're selling tires, you give a loan for tires for like six months because the, 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 the truck owner is hand to mouth on working capital. So tires, which is a consumable succeeding is dependent also on financial services, right? So I think we do, as, as mentioning, we do multiple experiments, right? So um, I think the good work is happening on the consumable sector, right? Very good work is, on the, is happening on the financial services space, right? And I think six to twelve months is when we would know how these verticals sort of stabilize and uh, like build up. Right, Rajesh, Blackpack has been through many changes um, in the last five years. But in the next five years, if one has to visualize Blackpack in terms of what else yeah. you will do or expand to uh, or scale up as, yeah. um, what framework should one look at? I think um, again, um, very simple access, right? Um, how many truck operators are we helping and enabling in the country? I think that's like our North Star metric. That's where most of our discussions start with in, within the company, outside the company. That's number one. Today, that number, as I was mentioning, on a monthly basis, about 30 to 33 percent of the truck operators in the country use us, right? Which is about 1, 1.1 million uh, truck operators. Right? Second metric is that while they are doing business, be any of the verticals we are present in, right? How much of that they're doing with us, right? So we enjoy very high wallet shares in payments telematics, right? We still have, like, let's say, we, we, we are seeing more around today, 20 to 30 percent kind of wallet share on the marketplace vertical. So a trucker who's depending on probably, let's say, two trips out of the six trips in a month, can he depend more? So as our network starts expanding to like all the industrial hubs, more shippers get signed up on the platform. We have all demand of all the various truck types, right? Various different commodities, right? At all times which is needed for a truck operator, that wallet share penetration will increase. That's second thing. Third is, if, if you look at the most of the services we are doing today, right? Um, there is significant value which is added to a trucker, but still the value is not like, let's say if you look at our telematics device. We help him in identifying driver, driver behavior, driver management, a little bit of location intelligence. But are we truly helping him, helping the driver, helping the truck operator avoid an accident? Answer is no, right? Are we truly helping him completely save on mileage, you know, yeah. truly, truly directly? No. We're giving him cues based on which he's reacting and doing it. I think a lot of areas like this, be it on payments, government is also mulling on the entire aspect of like, you know, GPS based trolling, right? I think a lot of these values, which are like probably, you know, third, fourth, kind of you know phases of maturity i think we are continuously experimenting and i think being more pivotal part of the truckers life doing much more innovative solutions for them is where you know the entire thing will be progressing into got it got it um, any entrepreneur who you look up to for advice when you know during the tough times or the low points in your journey so i think uh, uh, in in my life uh, you know there are three people who play different roles and 
uh, you know there are different genres you know for which I just inbound into them and uh, generally I can inbound into them any time. Who are these three people? Uh, first is uh, we got very lucky with uh, partnering with uh, uh, Flipkart during mm -hmm. our early stages and at that time the investments were led by Billy as part of Flipkart so he's always been a go-to man like any crisis he's been there and I've never seen like because I also don't bug him much <laughs> whenever, but whenever I bug him he's like there in few seconds number one right number two person uh, again whom I met pretty early on in my in my building the company was Raghu Taxi for sure uh, founder and CEO right Raghunandan he's uh, he's been very kind very like let's say he's I think I think availability is like blessing because let's say they are so busy, so just stepping out of their own course and helping others is a very good thing, right? So I think second uh, is Raghu, right? And third, as I was mentioning, we have a coterie of uh, Anand's uh, angels. Uh, so Anand angels is the term we name, but it's the seeds which he has done in Anand every different of year, hmm. right? So this th this three firepower, which is you know Harsha, Vamshi, Neeraj, Vivek, right? Uh, you know, uh, Sumit, all of them are like just available whenever whenever I need. So I think these are the three like, you know, my sources whenever I'm down or I need any advice, any help, I just bounce in, they just bail me out. Okay, on that note, thank you very much Rajesh for talking to us on Bits to Billions. Great to have you, Morish. Thank you so much, Andhra.